Hello and welcome. My name is John Yanofsky. I'm the director at Kupferberg Center for the Arts at Queens College, and thank you for joining us tonight's KCA online program and our latest installment of our brand new lecture demonstration series called In the World's Borough, which features artists representing various Queens-based cultural communities who will present unique elements of a particular style of music and dance. We started the series with a trip to Brazil a few weeks ago, and last week, toured and learned about Spanish flamenco music and dance. And this evening, we're absolutely thrilled to welcome vocalist and violin player Liz Hanley, who will explore the connection between her Irish roots and her American home through song and fiddle. She'll share some segments, she'll inform, she'll teach, and hopefully even inspire you at home to join in, try a few vocal lessons and techniques, so don't be shy. Now, we also invite you to join the conversation throughout the program with your comments and questions for Liz in the chats in the chat section here on YouTube, right here, or maybe it's down here. Um, and we're just really excited to continue to bring you programs at home. Now, we're all very excited to be coming to the end of the pandemic and really return to in-person, but we at Kupferberg Center have just been absolutely thrilled to be able to present a whole series of programs for you virtually, and we'll continue to do so in a hybrid season next year. But right now, we're excited to continue with this is going to be our last program of the 2021 season. And what a year it's been. It certainly and indeed has been unique. We're so appreciative of our sponsors and our funders who've helped us navigate these times to bring you a full slate of virtual offerings. We thank them for their support including New York Community Bank, who's our title season sponsor. We could not do our programs without their support. The New York City Department of Cultural Affairs, your tax dollars hard at work. And our namesake benefactors, the Max and Selma Kupperberg Family Foundation, whose transformational gift 12 years ago helped create the Kupperberg Center for the Arts. And of course, all of you at home, without whom all of our pro programs certainly would not be possible. And which brings us to tonight in the world's borough featuring Liz Hanley. Liz was raised in an Irish family in Boston and learned her traditional Irish and American folk repertoire from her father, who does make a cameo this evening in one of the clips Liz will be sharing, as well as her grandfather. She studied classical violin at NYU and currently calls Brooklyn home, so we're working on her hard to come over to Queens. Now, Liz is active in the traditional music scenes in New York City, across the US, and in Ireland and the UK. Her distinctive voice and fiddle playing, along with her adventurous affinity for other musical genres, has fostered collaborations with a wide range of musicians and artists, locally, nationally, and internationally. Now, it's my true, true pleasure to welcome into our KCA virtual studio, Liz Hanley. Hey, Liz. Thanks, John. Hi. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's, it's really, really great to have you here. We absolutely have our colleague Carlos Cuestas that can't join us tonight to thank for bringing you into our program. He was the one who hired you to complement our offerings as part of In the World Borough. And so we're really, really honored to have you here with us, sharing your music, your personality, and uh, yeah. your vision. So yeah, thank I wonder if you Carlos. can maybe just <laughs> definitely thank Carlos, wherever he is right now. Uh, but I'm wondering, Liz, if you might want to just kind of set up what the audience at home will kind of be experiencing this evening through this virtual lecture demonstration. Yeah, well, as you mentioned, I'm a singer and I'm a fiddle player, violinist. Um, and so I'll just be going through, uh, I pre-recorded some, some performances with uh, some by myself, one with my father, one with uh, a few with the Murphy Beds, who are a great duo from New York City, and um, an amazing singer, Tamar Horn. And uh, so I'll be sharing some performances that we filmed, and I'll just be introducing those. But I'll also go through and tell you how I use the voice um, use my voice and consider it an instrument and how it works and how to kind of warm it up and and keep it loose. And also like how I use the fiddle as an accompanimental instrument and just accompaniment in general is uh, something I've thought about. And as a, as a instrumentalist uh, that, the violin, the fiddle is traditionally more of a melodic instrument. So 
uh, although it is used accompanimentally in some in, in some cultures. So it's kind of interesting to for me to think about that. And yeah, I think that's uh, I think that'll all fit into an hour. <laughs> yeah, and if we go a little over, that's fine too. And is there is there anything really for the lay person at home that you would love for them to walk away from this program with? Either something they didn't know about Irish American cultural and musical roots, or specifically the use of voice and fiddle in the repertoire. Well, I think what's really important to me is that music is for everyone. I think everyone's a musician. Uh, and I think everyone can make music if they want to. Um, and I think expressing yourself creatively and through music is, is it's such a, been such a gift for me. Um, and I, I just would encourage anyone and everyone to, to go for it and practice it and do it and make it in any way that you can, if that's what you want to do. Um, so while I have a lot of like I've studied a lot and I've thought a lot about the histories and the, you know, taking in a lot of different kinds of music and Irish music. It's, um, you know, you can start anywhere with anything. You don't even have to have an instrument. You have an instrument like right here um, by existing. <laughs> that is, that's great. And we will be, again, encouraging folks at home. You're going to do a vocal demonstration, providing some techniques. And even though we can't hear the folks at home through our live stream, you could definitely fill in in the comment section of YouTube. Let us know how you're doing at home as you're interacting and engaging with this music. So Liz, let's kind of jump right into it. I'm wondering if you could kind of set up our, our, our first segment. Yeah, so the first song is called My Son Tim, and this is a traditional Irish song. It's a song that I got from the collection of a, a, a great song collector from Dublin who's no longer with us. His name is Frank Hart, uh, and he just was one of those song collectors. He's got a, a million songs that he did. Um, he's really a source of inspiration for a lot of people, and this song is about a, a young man who goes off to war and he comes back without legs and his mother is really upset about this um, and she curses Napoleon it's a song from from that time and there's actually a lot of songs about Napoleon Bonaparte he uh, you know there was a there were a lot of wars around his time and a lot and the Irish fought in, in some of those wars. So there just happened to be a lot of songs about, about that period of history. And uh, I would consider it an anti-war song um, because it really is a conversation between a mother and a son um, about how much she cares for him. And so, yeah, I um, will be accompanying myself on fiddle and uh, singing the song on my balcony in Brooklyn. And watch out, there is a pigeon in the first uh, few seconds, I think. <laughs> so look out for that. Um, and yeah, so this is my son, Tim. So 
tell you when you didn't run away from the Frenchman too. Do ray a whack for the da, whack for the diddle for the dido. Yeah, um, so many places to to start there. I mean, first the whole the whole idea of music and social commentary, right? It's always been a through line, and, and this this idea that you just introduced of this whole trove of Napoleonic War, you know, songs and that are just. I'm sure there's a PhD student out there who's you know writing a lot about that. But I'm curious, you know, you 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 introduce it as you're going to be accompanying yourself on that. And what are the kind of challenges that are you, unique challenges to accompany yourself while singing on your fiddle? Well, it's kind of like, you know, <laughs> uh, it's coordination is all, it just takes practice. Um, and it's, it takes trial and error, you know, uh, and yeah. I think like it's just you just gotta keep trying. I didn't I, that that those techniques like that exact way of accompanying that song is like something I've picked up bits and pieces from from other people. But uh, um, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that it's exactly like like someone else or a certain style um, of accompanying. And when you approach a song like that, that obviously has a very fixed structure musically, harmonically, uh, you know, in terms of the lyrics as well. How much are you still putting your own signature, your own stamp on it, whether it's improvising some of the pieces or stretching things past what it might be written on the page? Uh, how do you approach like standard repertoire to really make it your own? Well, I like to listen to a lot of, with this, it's like we're talking traditional music. So there's, probably multiple people um, before you who have sung these songs and, you know, hopefully, uh, or not hopefully, like, you know, there, there's going to be other versions of it out there, other recordings. Um, but when you, sometimes you find a song in a book somewhere and like nobody's done it. And that's uh, really cool when that happens too, because you get to really kind of start fresh, but it's nice to, it's nice to just, I will kind of try to find everybody's everybody's performance of it that exists out there and listen to those and kind of learn learn the different ways that people have done it. And then I just really like to 
kind of live in the songs. So I'll go out to, we have sessions um, in the Irish tradition that exist in the pubs or in houses. And they're like parties where you just kind of play tunes with other people, sing songs, um, draw from a, from a common repertoire. And so I'll just practice them in front of people with different people uh, playing different instruments with me. And I'll hear something maybe that I hadn't thought of and maybe I'll use that in the next time I play it. And over time, it just kind of like develops a life of its own. <laughs> That's very cool. Well, we definitely have some folks who are, are, are definitely uh, Liz fans. We have Jan, uh, excuse me, Jane Kelton. Go Liz. Oh yeah. Uh, so you hey, definitely Jane. have some fans out there. Um, Lucas uh, Papelius. Oh part yeah. Of my, pronunciation. my son Tim. Yes. Excellent. Yeah. And then oh, uh, yeah. Eileen Boyle. How wonderful! I need a fix of live Irish music. So thank oh, you. Oh, this is so cool. Some friends in there. Turns <laughs> are Alan. Yes. Excellent. Eileen. Excellent. Kevin Crawford. Amazing. Uh, great. So, so Liz, I'm wondering if you could kind of queue up uh, the next segment for us. Yeah. So next I'm going to invite my really good friend, Tamar Korn. Tamar Korn is a early jazz singer um, in the, well, she sings jazz and especially in the early jazz tradition. Um, and she's someone that I met um years ago she sings in a lot of different clubs around new york city uh the barbez is a great world music club in in brooklyn near prospect park and also mona's is a great little dive over in alphabet city and she just she is a, an amazing singer and an amazing vocalist and her father was a violinist, so she does a lot of like mimicking instruments, um, especially the violin. So she's a really creative vocalist. And I just thought it'd be, I, I met her, so she's not an Irish musician, but I met her in this concert series that I've been doing for more than a, more than a decade now at the Irish Arts Center. It's a winter solstice celebration. And I guess the house band, you could say, is the Greenfields of America, and uh, which is an Irish band uh, led by Mick Maloney. And he has invited a lot, has invited a lot of different people over the years from um, different music communities. And Tamar Horn has been a regular in that show. And that's how I really got to know her. And so we've kind of worked up different songs over the years, learned each other's songs. And I just thought it'd be a cool thing to invite her along to do a song with me, uh, a bit of cross pollination. And so we are going to do a song, start off with a song called Katie Cruel. And Katie Cruel is an American folk song with Scottish origins, probably. So there are a lot of songs that have kind of moved around over time. And uh, sometimes you don't know the exact origins, but you can sort of guess. Um, and so you'll see songs that appear in the Irish tradition and the English tradition and even over in Australia and here in uh, Appalachia. Um, some songs that seem very similar, but have kind of morphed into their own song over time. And Katie Cruel is one of those, um, one of those songs that a lot of people have done. And I just, I really love it. It's an interesting little melody. And, uh, yeah, so this is the song Katie Cruel with Tamar Korn. Mm When I first came to town, they called me the Roving Jewel. Now they've changed their tune, they call me Katie Cruel. Oh, diddle a oh, little I, oh, day. Oh, then I was what I would be, then would I be, but I am not. Here am I, where I must be, go where I would, I cannot. Oh, diddle a oh, little I, oh, day. Brought me the bottles plenty, now they change their tune, they bring me the bottles empty. Oh, diddle I, oh, little I, oh, day. Oh, then what's what I would be, then would I be, but I am not here, am I, where I must be, for where would I cannot? Oh, diddle I, oh, little I, oh, day.
love me, I know where I'm going, I know who's going with me. Oh, little Adie, oh, little Iode. Who that I was, what I would be, then would I be, but I am not. Here am I, but I must be, go where I would, I cannot. Oh, little Adie, oh, little Iode. You guys look like you were really having fun. Yeah. Uh, I always have fun when I'm hanging out with Tamar. She's <laughs> yeah. Oh, we have some great comments. Uh, we're just going to pull right into it. Um, Stuart Nee uh, says, top of the day to you. And thank you for sharing your talent. My wife is Irish and she is listening intently. And Caitlin R, watching with my four-year-old and two-year-old. My four-year-old may read, can't take her eyes off you. Thank you sharing your talents with us so that like brings up a question of just you know in terms of the last you know 14 16 months like have you been able to kind of keep your work you know and keep your muscles you know in shape and toned and and with audiences whether it's two people or 200 folks like what has that been to not have that direct interaction with your audience which clearly we're seeing how much people are really um you know, connecting with your music. Yeah, it's it's been. I mean, it's it's not always been easy, mm -hmm. but I've definitely learned a lot from this period. I mean, you know, I have some equipment and some skills now that like I didn't have before. Um, so I've had to really learn how to do things virtually, uh, which has been challenging. But also, also like. I'm glad I know some things now. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. And I also, I made a point of, um, I did vocal warm ups almost every day. It's part of my routine now. Um, it's like when I'm like getting ready in the morning, I just, I warm up my voice and, uh, and then I'm able to like, that I'm just warm throughout the day and, uh, tried to do that with a fiddle as well. Um, Although when I finally went out to my first session um, in, let's see, to play tunes with with some some friends in New York, I I had this like muscle fear. <laughs> I was like, I, my muscles were like, do you know the tunes? Do you remember the tunes? Like and th like and then I kind of like settled in after a little while. But it was kind of a it was a. a feeling that I just hadn't hadn't really had before because I hadn't gone so many I played a little you know we we did some like outdoor stuff last mm -hmm. summer like with at a distance 
but uh, then it had been like several months, you know, since there was any kind of like playing with other people really, except for splicing together some videos, um, you know, to, for the virtual experiences. But with audiences, I have to say, I do really miss, I mean, yeah, I miss like coming off the stage and, and saying hello to people and, and being on stage and seeing people's um, and experience of the concert mm -hmm. and interacting and like i mean there's really a give and take like a, we fuel each other in that in that environment um so doing things to a camera is is really different um and you don't get that same i mean i was kind of somewhat used to that because i've done some recordings and and video work before so you know it's it's a little bit of a it feels a little bit more sterile but um yeah, I have missed. I have missed being out there. Um, yeah, you, you don't get to hear the applause, but Lola Johnson, I think, has like seven hand claps. So let's bring Lola because you can't hear the applause, but there it is. Lola is, is giving it to you. Aww, um, hey, yeah, Lola. There's, there's a lot of good comments like that. We have a great comment and question from the next festival of emerging artists. Uh, who comment the hand motions with the vocals really showcase the voice as an instrument is that traditional or a flourish of this performance and great stuff oh that's a really interesting question i'm i i would say that i'm not totally sure um about the tradition of it uh tamar corn would really be the person to ask <laughs> i know that that she very much does does that kind of thing she she also does like yeah, she, she'll do, she'll kind of make the hand motions to, to signal which instrument she is uh, mimicking, voicing. Um, cool. So maybe, maybe it is a tradition and I don't really know it as an Ir as part of the Irish tradition. That's great. That's great. And then we have just some wonderful comments. Hannah Henderson, that was so beautiful from Hannah Henderson. Thanks, Hannah. Eileen Boyle again says, I'm closing my eyes and imagining we're all in Doolin in O'Connor's pub. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That that day is not far off, I think, for many, many of us. Um, so, Liz, why don't you set up the next segment? I know this is going to be kind of a demonstration. Um, really excited to, to share this with our folks at home. Yeah, totally. Uh, so this is me and Tamar again. Um, and this is a little bit more of, it's less of a performance and more of a, yeah, a demonstration of like how to loosen up in a kind of relaxed way. Um, we're kind of playing off each other and, uh, going through the voice as an instrument. And, uh, so I think I do kind of set it up a little bit in the video. So I don't want to say too much or double double what I say. Um, but I, I just love working with Tamar. She and I have a great, um, we, we could play off each other in a, in a nice relaxed manner. So it was really fun to do this video with her. And with that, take it away. Okay, so we have this body and this body is our instrument. It's our, we use our voice um, through different parts of the body. We have different resonating areas, like our lungs. Um, oh, it helps us pump the air in and out, along with the diaphragm, which is the muscle under the lungs that pumps air out and expands when, when we breathe in. And uh, we also resonate through our throat and into our face, behind the nose. And, and into the head um, and we use our teeth and our tongue to create t -t articulation. Um, and articulate. articulate. And Tamar is a real expert in doing a vocalized <laughs> instrumental imitation. <laughs> With her voice it's very cool so one thing that came to mind is the the nose when we use the that really brassy 
You make some pretty cool instruments with that sound. And by blending, I guess, all the... The head and the throat. When your throat's open, you like kind of have a yawning sound, right? And when you're in your nose, you sound a bit like this. And when you sound like a pigeon, it's like, woo, woo. That's kind of more in the head. I tend not to try the really brassy sounds too much because it just is a little jarring. But I, but I find that if I mix a, a bright nasal resonance with a slightly open throat mm -hmm. it's not that i think of these things very consciously i just sort of hear what comes out and play with the like aperture of my throat or the openness of my nose because i don't really like i mean unless maybe you're trying to talk funny or something like that <laughs> but or i guess the fiddle sound is a closed it's a resonant nasal sound like yeah. it's like an ng cool yeah or the horn is more of a throat like Oh, that's cool. I love the, the, the drum, the brushes on the drum sound. It's very easy to do too loudly, but mm. um, if you can find some mixture of an SHT, SH, depending on what blends, you always think of what is blending with the other people you're playing with. Um, but like a... So it would be like brushes on a snare and you could do a hi-hat like... Or a louder... Uh, or you could do maracas like uh, or something like it. Um, I'm trying to think of a rhythm now. Well, I'm noticing that you're not really using your vocal cords when you no. do that. You're just using the air and your articulators, your yeah. teeth yeah. and your tongue. So your vocal cords are what make this sound. And when you like when you speak or when you sing, but when you just whisper, when you just whisper, you're kind of just or <laughs> you're not using <laughs> you're not using the yeah, you're not using your vocal cords. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> Should we do a little jam? Yeah, let's do the thing where we both hold down a bass line. Okay. So we'll try bass sounds and we'll trade off. And this is something you can do with friends uh, or even do a loop station. Um, if you want to do it that way with yourself. Cool. So let's find a little bass line that we can. Okay. Bum, 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 Boom, 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 boom,
<laughs> All right. <laughs> so is the high five like part of the part of the song? Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> I mean, your hands are an instrument. Oh man, there's such rapport between the two of you. Uh, I mean, are you have you all a, sh a regular collaborator, or would you perform? Uh, quite a bit not there? not regular enough. Yeah. But maybe we'll change that. <laughs> well, I love like really hearing her early jazz influence that you as you described, you know, even how she did all the instrumentations. Any any challenges between a jazz sensibility and kind of a Irish folk tradition, or do they connect more than one might think? Well, you know, I think it's just like I think with us it's just we have good chemistry. So it's hard to make a general statement one way or the other, but uh, I would, I'd say like the, that there are always gonna be crossover like um, elements to any types of music. Um, I mean, for instance, in the first song that I sang, My Son Tim, I sang whack for the diddle for the dido, which is a bit of nonsense. It doesn't actually mean anything. And so you have kind of, some it reminds me of scatting you know or like which can sometimes be i think irish music is less improvisatory um there can be ornamentations that sort of vary in the moment but uh but it's it's more it's there's lot there's not really improvisation so scatting i guess is more improvisatory um which is a difference but I guess just making making noise and nonsense using nonsense words um that's a similarity that's a very interesting di di distinction between the decorative versus ornamental versus improvisational because the lay person maybe can't make that distinction you know yeah <laughs> uh, still like riffing on what's there in a way that is like unique and new well, that's great. That's great. And uh, will we see and hear from from her again? No, uh, that's it. <laughs> okay. Well, we well I mean, I'm sure we will somewhere <laughs> well, down the road. Yeah, really, really done. Thank, thank her for being a part of this program. So cool. It's like let's uh, let's move on to your next piece. I'm wondering if you could set that up for us. Yeah, for sure. So the next band that is playing with me is a duo uh, called the Murphy Beds. And the Murphy Beds consist of Jefferson Hamer and Eamon O'Leary, who are two really great New York-based, uh, New York City-based musicians. Um, they play guitars and um, bazooki, which is a Greek instrument that has now become part of the Irish tradition, and mandolin. And uh, with me, they play guitar and, man and bazooki. So you'll see that instrument. And they're just fantastic. I mean, they've just got a, a real, speaking of rapport, those, those guys really just kind of weave together uh, beautiful arrangements. They're both great songwriters and great arrangers. Um, and I made an album called The Ecstasy of St. Cecilia, which they both play on. Um, so I wanted to do a few songs with them here. And the first song is called The Briar and the Rose. And this song is actually... Um, a Tom Waits song. And he wrote this um, for his, for the Black Rider, which uh, is an album, but also a play that he co-wrote with William S. Burroughs um, based on a, a German folk tale. And this song is from, from that play um, and from that album, The Black Rider. Um, yeah, so I'll just we'll just go ahead and and play that song for you, The Briar and the Rose.
Beautiful, really, really gorgeous. Thank you. Um, I also want to just encourage our folks who are out there watching and listening, please to continue to send some questions and comments into the chat and we'll get them on screen. Lisa, seeing the, that song and just even what you presented and the kind of the variation and, the, and, and difference between each of your songs that you presented so far, what have you wondered when you're preparing for a live gig with so much material? Like how do you construct? your set list is it how you're feeling that day is it the most recent music that's on your mind is it a combination of all of those and, and even others well it's very much dependent on who i'm playing with um i've been kind of a part of so many different groups uh, and not always just doing a solo thing so um yeah, I don't know. I think I might do more gigs kind of like this um, <laughs> in the future. This has been that, fun. That's great. So we do have some comments. Um, Eileen, thank you, Eileen. Love, love, love this one, exclamation point. Our own Teresa Lenz, so beautiful. And Low Whistle, who's uh, definitely been been in the chat. Thank you, H2O, Hanley, and <laughs> O'Leary. H2O, yes. Wow. Oh my gosh. I'm going to give him credit. Yeah. Wow. Gotta get, okay. Gotta give, gotta give him I'm going to remember that. 
you guys use that. And then, you know, three claps again. We, we want to make sure that you feel the, feel the audience out here really responding to what you're doing. Liz. I wonder if that's Lulu Eckert. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> She'll have to, un or he'll have to unmask. So cool. So we're going to keep it moving and go into your next segment. And uh, I'm thinking, is this the one where you have the special guest? Uh, no, I think we're doing John Riley. Yeah, um, okay. yeah, so we're still sticking with the H2O, Hanley, <laughs> Ham Hammer, Hammer, and, and O'Leary. Um, this is a song called John Riley, and John Riley, um, is a real person. Uh, was he is uh, was an a man from uh Connemara in the west of Ireland who left Ireland around the time of the Great Famine, and he emigrated to Canada and then the U.S., where um, really his only option was to join the Army, the U.S. Army. And this is kind of a common experience, I think, for um, for folks who came over with, with really uh, not a lot of options, especially if there was a war going on. And at that time, the Mexican war, Mexican American war was about to, um, happen. So he got sent down to Mexico where he pretty soon realized that he was on, he felt like he was on the wrong side. Um, so he, uh, deserted and joined the Mexican, um, rebellion and started a battalion called the Saint, they, they named themselves the San Patricio. They were dubbed the San Patricios and he was branded a deserter. He had like a D scarred into his face and, um, spent, uh, many of those, the men in that battalion were hanged, uh, for, for deserting. And, um, but it's a really interesting song about him, and he, he has a very interesting uh, story. And the song was written by Tim O'Brien, who it's on his album, The Crossing, which is all about the, um, like his, his take on the Irish American experience and like the music kind of influencing um, and, and traveling back and forth across the waters and influencing each other. So it's a very interesting album, The Crossing by Tim O'Brien. And yes, yeah, so this is the song, John Riley. John Riley came from Goa Town in the years of the Irish hunger. He sailed away to America when the country was much younger. The place was strange and work was scarce. All he knew. Get drunk on demon runs so 
Fantastic. And it had me thinking, you know, about how this music gets passed on, you know, and I'm assuming so much of it was a oral tradition, like going to these sessions and listening and learning from other artists. Has that fundamentally changed in 2021 with technology and the computer, or is that still the main way folks are learning this music? I think it's actually changed much earlier than this year, um, you know, with, with YouTube and with, um, well, recorded music in general, which goes back, you know, 100 years. Uh, we have people learning things from life. I've learned a lot from recordings, um, you know, CDs and then MP3s and then streaming and YouTube and uh, going to definitely going to sessions as well. Um, but you know, you do try to not, you, it, it, there is this kind of tradition of like, if someone sings a song and that that's kind of becomes their song in your community. And you don't really want to be singing someone else's song, even though it's traditional and it's part of the tradition. It's kind of, these songs can sometimes sort of be passed on uh, to a person. And then like, you know, you they, they have such a great rendition of it that like, if you're in their community, you might not really sing it out at the pub, especially not if they're gonna be there. So I feel like there's this, there's definitely a, a, a lot of like library scouring and old <laughs> scouring old recordings and trying to find stuff that isn't really totally being lived in the moment, in this particular moment. So, um, and then of course there are songs that we call them Kamalias, uh, which is come all of you, you know. Um, there are songs that are kind of like your, you know, your top 40s hits that, that you'd wanna like, that have a good chorus and you could sing and everyone can join in and, um, so you, it's good to have like a handful of those in your repertoire and then also try to have ones that you can um, kind of like em, embody and, and do as your own. Um, so it's, I'd say it probably has, it's such a, it's a living tradition. Uh, mm -hmm. It's, it's really evolving and changing uh, with technology and the way we exist um, in our communities. That's great. Well, there still is appreciation, clearly. Um, Eileen Boyle says, thanks for keeping these songs alive. Good vibes. Oh, thanks, uh, you know, there is something about passing it on. Uh, we have a great comment from Tom Farley. Great session. Great sounds. And then Mary um, Nasia again. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing. Lovely. Oh. This is two songs ago. Lovely Briar and Rose. Thank you, Liz. Love Aunt Mary. Hey, Aunt Mary. <laughs> Thank you. It's great to see to know Thanks that you're being, there. Thanks for being here, Aunt Mary. Um, and then Hannah Henderson says, this event format is great. I love gigs and concert too. And this really works and gives us a chance to really learn and understand at the same time as enjoying the music. So thank you. It really is um, incredible to be able to hear you describe the music and the content and context and then hear it and then be able to really process and connect, connect those dots. So we really appreciate sure. it time and effort you put into kind of constructing today's program. So oh, we're gonna thanks. go into our next piece and I want yeah. you to, to give us a little intro and set this one up for us. 
Well, actually, before, okay, never mind. <laughs> uh, we'll talk about it after. But um, this song is called Saint Stephen. And Saint Stephen is actually a Grateful Dead song. And so what I want to ask John later is I, I wonder if he's aware that the Grateful Dead played at Queens College in uh, 1970, um, October 1970. So the 50th anniversary of that was, it was just this past October, uh, which is pretty cool. And you can actually listen to that concert online. It's up there. Uh, this song, St. Stephen, was not on their set list that night, unfortunately. But uh, it's a great song. I just, I really love this song. And I love taking songs that are not in the tradition and kind of making them a part of of this music and this tradition. So I don't know if there's any Grateful Dead fans out there. I feel like this is this is one of those things every time I play a concert in the US, anywhere, it doesn't matter where I go, there's always going to be someone who just sings the first line with me. Um, so <laughs> I love, I love that. That's also such a, a big, um, community. Um, and so St. Stephen is, uh, I actually decided to learn the song and kind of make it a, a trad song because I was, um, as I mentioned earlier, I've been doing this winter solstice concert at the Irish Arts Center for the past um, 12 years. And, you know, when you do a, a concert like that, um, you want material that makes sense for that time of year. And you want to try something new and try and find something different. And um, I just was like, I wonder if there's a song about St. Stephen, because his feast day is the day after Christmas. Um, and so I went looking online and for to try to dig through and see if there are any old folk songs about him. And of course, the first song that pops up is St. Stephen by the Grateful Dead. And I was like, yes, of course, this song is, is epic. And um, so I turned the, the psychedelic guitar solo into a fiddle tune and uh, kind of rearranged it a little bit so that it fits like a, a kind of traditional format um so let's just see what you think with uh here it is saint saint stephen <laughs> Saint Stephen with a rose in and out of the garden he goes. Country garden in the wind and rain, wherever he goes, the people complain. Stephen prospering in his time, well he may and he may decline. Did it matter? Does it now? Stephen would answer if he only knew.
<laughs> yeah, the Irish roots of American rock and roll. Totally. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you 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 drew that full circle and connected it to Queens College. I, I very much remember when I got my job uh, two years ago. One of my friends, a big Grateful Dead fan, said, "Oh, that's cold in auditorium." The Dead played an incredible show there in 1970 and busted out his audio cassette hand scrawled. I think there's some really famous songs that were performed at that show. So yeah, awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's so cool. And um, we have a comment from Stuart Nee, been a deadhead since 67. He introduces himself. And then his next comment, this should be posted on the Grateful Dead site. You would have millions of fans overnight. <laughs> and I don't think he's wrong. Uh, that was that was amazing. That was amazing. And, and you know, I mean, I, I say that half in jest, but you probably could peel away some of the elements of American rock and roll. And obviously the blues is in there, but certainly folk music and its roots in, you know, Irish and Scottish and, and uh, culture is, is a, is a direct through line for sure yeah yeah they definitely did a lot of traditional songs they had they had they they definitely were influenced by folk music so we have a comment from kerm sir ireland to appalachia to san francisco to brooklyn well to queens <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then to Brooklyn, or one of those two. So yeah. thank you so much, Liz, for, for sharing that and really taking us on an incredible journey, you know, through your, your music and your roots and, you know, so many different elements, um, but still, a, you know, a singular voice um, and, and really appreciate, you know, what you've done uh, for today's program and really showcasing all of the different elements of, of this music that that you love. Uh, so yeah, I'm really, really excited for you to kind of take us through to your last segment and um, then we'll kind of come back afterwards and take some final questions and comments, but I uh, wanted to, you to be able to set this one up. I know this is a special one. Thanks, John. Yeah, uh, this last piece is, is called, um, well, it's called Southwind and, and then it's, uh, and, and then it'll be a tune called Out on the Ocean. And I'm actually performing this with my dad, uh, Andy Hanley, a Queens native. Uh, he grew up in Jackson Heights. So uh, I just thought that was cool to be doing a Queens college gig and to include my dad, um, who is also a fiddle player. Uh, and so I learned my first fiddle tunes from him and the song Southwind is actually a really old traditional melody. And we call these slow melodies airs. And they're, the words I believe are, are more recent um, to this song. It's originally a, a melody and an air would have been played by uh, an instrument, maybe the pipes or fiddle um and so it would have been a slow kind of break from maybe you were having a party with lots of tunes and dancing uh, fiddle tunes are are kind of or tunes in general are were written for dancing um but you'd have these slow tunes um slow airs or a song that would kind of break up the party and give the musicians or um, the dancers a break. Uh, so Southwind is one of those really old traditional slow airs. And then we'll go into a jig called Out on the Ocean, which is a pretty common session tune. Um, you're likely to hear this tune pretty much in any session. Um, and yeah, so Andy Hanley and Liz Hanley doing Southwind and Out on the Ocean.
<laughs> ah, that was really, really special. Oh, yeah. proud, proud, proud Papa. Real proud Papa. <laughs> but we also have to give props to Pops. There's low whistle says, go Andy. Props low, to Pops. <laughs> low whistle oh, also sure. says, huh? huh? Yeah, right on. <laughs> and Kelly Robinson, greetings from Northern Ireland. So oh, hi, Kelly. <laughs> from the source, from the source. Uh, that was really special. How often do you get to to perform with your or play with your your father? Well, I've been spending a little bit of time here in Boston, hanging out, and so it's it's uh, more more lately than than in a long time, um, and not often enough actually. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully more in the future. <laughs> Yeah, and we, we have a, a comment from Freda Torrin, two of my favorites beautifully played. And then someone by the name of Janet Hanley, I'm wondering if you know her, um, is a oh, proud yeah. mom and dad. <laughs> Probably my mom. I don't know any <laughs> other Janet Hanleys. <laughs> uh, of course. That's, Hi, mom. That's great. It's always a family affair. And Mary, again, lovely father-daughter performance. That's such a, a beautiful piece to, to kind of conclude our program with. So Liz, really, truly want to thank you for joining us and, and kind of capping off our 2021 season, uh, our final In the World's Borough lecture demonstration. Kupperberg will be back at it come the fall, but this summer we're also going to be resuming in person. But we want to definitely let folks know how they can continue to find out more about your music, your work, any of the gigs that you have coming up. So we always like to be able to kind of put on the screen your, your social media, your website. If you want to kind of take us through that, that would be great. Yeah, so I have a Facebook page. Um, and I also have, well, on the Facebook page, I'll have like, I'll put up events when they come in. It's a little bit slow this summer, still um, kind of still in pandemic mode, but uh, it should pick up a little bit in the fall. I've got some things in the works. Nothing's really posted yet, but it'll be there. Um, I, I have a website and uh, it's under construction, but there'll be some stuff there too as, as, as it comes in. And I also have uh, an Instagram page where it's just kind of a fun, fun, creative spot. Uh, but I also post stuff there. And I have, what else do I have? I have, oh yeah, Bandcamp. Um, I mentioned that I have an album. So you it can be purchased there on CD or download or Bandcamp actually has a really cool streaming service as well. Um, so you can buy it digitally and then it, you can stream it on their app. Um, so it's a great way of supporting artists because, um, uh, you know, some of these streaming services, they don't really actually most of the streaming services don't really pay us very much. Uh, so that's a great way to support uh, your favorite artists is at bandcamp.com. Most musicians have a page these days. Um, and they did such a great thing during the pandemic. Every Friday was, uh, every Friday, of first Friday of the month, they were not taking a cut. Um, so all 100% of proceeds were going to um, musicians. And they also do other little causes on certain days um, where they'll donate proceeds. So they're really great. I love Bandcamp. They're great. That's that's great. And please we encourage everyone, please follow me. I don't work for Bandcamp. Yeah. I don't work for Bandcamp. <laughs> they are great. Uh, like but you work for Liz Hanley on Bandcamp. I do. <laughs> that's really important. But please we encourage everyone to 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 follow and friend Liz through her social media handles. Um, we will certainly be following your work and your career and I very much look forward to another opportunity that we can have you back in some capacity at Cupperberg. Um, and as I mentioned, Cupperberg will be continuing programming over the summer. We are absolutely thrilled to be returning to in-person programming, our annual summer concert series at Gantry State Park in Long Island City called Live at the Gantries kicks off on Tuesday, July 20th at 7 p.m. And for six consecutive Tuesdays, you can come out and enjoy free music with the backdrop of the East River and the Manhattan skyline. Um, it's just uh, it, it's a long time coming, and you can always find out what's happening by visiting our website at kupferbergcenter.org. 
But most importantly, so glad everyone has joined us to continue this interaction, supporting artists, being here for you, giving you that interaction and that energy back to continue to do the incredible work that you're doing. So Liz, thank you. It has been a true honor. And for everyone at home, we really appreciate you guys being here, supporting Coverberg Center and our efforts to continue to support artists throughout this pandemic. Very much look forward to seeing everyone back here online at our next program and certainly in person. So thank everyone for joining us tonight. Everyone be safe, take care, and enjoy the summer. Bye folks. Bye, thank you.